Hello. Hello. Hi, Lenny. Hi, how are you? Good. Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, Lenny. Okay, cool. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for that little intro. <laughs> I hope it was good. I, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. you know, spoil anything that's coming for you. Um, so I try to keep it just what your Twitter says and what yeah. Google says. No, it's perfect. Cool. Flattered. Thank you. Of course. I'm excited to see how this goes. I have, you know, I think you already saw the list of questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I did a brief little run cool. through. So. Lovely. Let me know when I think we're back. You're back. Did oh, we're back. Oh. You're live. <laughs> That's what I said. I said you're live. Well, I didn't. I didn't hear that. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's so great, guys. Yeah. This is what it's like working from home. How are you uh, doing in all of this quarantine madness, Lenny? And thank you again for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm I'm doing good. I honestly, there's not really <laughs> anything different in my life because <laughs> I'm gaming. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, have you been playing anything different, or are you just playing uh, your your usual roster of games? Um, well, see us always, but yeah, I'm definitely playing a lot of Valorant. I got the beta drop, so I've been playing a lot of Valorant. Um, and it's really like similar to Counter Strike, so it's yeah. really fun for me to play. Um, and Animal Crossing is kind of my little like when I don't want to be at my PC and I want to be in my bed or on the couch, I whip out my Switch, and like that's kind of like what I'm really enjoying right now is Animal Crossing. Amazing. Well, we just yeah. had a big, a big talk about it actually on the show. So I want to know uh, where, where are you at in Animal Crossing? What kind of things have you dived into? What's been kind of your obsession lately? Um, so I really like interior designing. So like I'm super oh, yeah. into like the whole layout of my island and like decorating my house and everything. So mm -hmm. I just got the um, the terraforming tool, the tool to like redesign your island. Oh yeah. Yeah, I the construction tool. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm right now that's what I'm doing is I'm laying out all the paths and stuff. But I really like that there's, um, you know how like you can have like QR codes for like custom stuff? Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I, I saw been people, using that a little bit. Yeah, they have like custom paths that you can um, download online. And so you can have like really neat walkways and stuff. And I saw someone that had like their plaza looked like a palace, like the way the flooring was all laid out. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to do that. So that's like really taking up a lot of my time right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have the full uh, decked out house size yet? Like, have you expanded your house to like a mansion size yet? No. So I have three rooms right now. I don't have the attic or the basement yet. Okay. Yeah. I still yeah. only have two rooms for my myself, yeah. actually. I don't I've have been... anything to put in them. So that's why I'm True. like, I don't want to get an attic and a basement yet. Cause I have one room that's completely empty right now. Cause I mm -hmm. don't know what to put in it. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same where like, I, I feel like my house is the time I spend the least amount of time in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mostly, I'm focused on the island. I'm focused on my villagers. I'm focused on, right now I'm focused on racking up some money. Mm -hmm. um, have you entered the turnip uh, stock market yet? Have you tried that I route to make- I have. Okay, good. Cool. I am, I'm kind of ashamed right now because I have like one side of my island is just covered in turnips that I'm waiting to sell. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm ashamed. So yeah, that's, that's my little- that's kind of what I've been up to is doing that whole thing on Animal Crossing. But do you have a favorite uh, villager at your island? Um, I don't even remember. I do have one who's like a, a workout fanatic. His name oh, okay. is Snake and he's a ninja. Oh, what? That's cool. I yeah. didn't even know that there was a snake villager. Well, he's not a snake. In, oh, so I should specify his name is Snake. He's not oh, an actual oh. <laughs> snake villager. I don't actually know what type of animal he is. He's oh, a okay. Rabbit. A rabbit? He may. He might be hmm. a rabbit. Yeah, you're a right. A rabbit he's got named Snake. Ears. Kind of what? ironic. A rabbit named Snake. It's kind of ironic. I know. <laughs> it's so weird. And he's like very obsessed with bulking, like getting bulk and yeah, and mus muscular. And do you have any? I think is that like a common theme in all people's islands in there? Some of their mm -hmm. villagers will always have like a similar dialogue chain or. Yeah, I think one of them's like a workout fanatic. Another one, yeah, like, is trying to be a pop star. Pop star. Um, yeah. I think, I think I don't know what the rest of them are, but okay. But everyone has kind of the same. Thing yeah. Of, yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure about that because I was like, yeah, Kyle has it on his island, and I have it on mine, so mm -hmm. it must be a theme. And then we do have one who like constantly sings at night. Yeah. I have a couple that sing. Yeah. Oh. You have a whole troop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love my islanders. They're do they hang great. out in the plaza and sing together? Do they hang out in the plaza and sing together? Yeah, they sing or they oh, run so and they cute. look like they're playing tag. They run like yeah. Naruto people. Oh, yeah. yeah. They do the, the Naruto, Naruto run. <laughs> yeah, the Naruto run is the yeah. best. Like, I love when they're doing that. I'm like, I want to join in. Why yeah. does my character do this? 
Um, cool. So I guess that's our little Animal Crossing chat. I'm glad you're playing it because I wasn't yeah. sure. Um, I, I wasn't sure you were. I, I don't know what type of games you're into, but I, that actually leads me to my next question, which is when you were younger, like what kind of hooked you to games in the first place? And then where did your passion sort of evolve? Yeah, so um, I started gaming because I, well, I kind of came from like a family of gamers. My sister oh, plays that's video cool. games. Um, I have two older brothers that play video games. So we were all really into gaming growing up and my parents were really supportive of it. Anytime there was a new console that came out, my parents bought it and we'd always, wow. like everyone would fight over it. So <laughs> my parents were like, we'd rather you play video games at home and know where you are than being out and not knowing what you're doing. So yeah. they were always supportive of it. Um, so it kind of started off more as like a family fun thing. Um, and then my brother got into PC gaming and he got into Counter-Strike. Um, he played 1.3, 1.6. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was really interesting to me because a lot of the games that we played were more like family friendly. And then, you know, seeing Counter-Strike, it was like an FPS game and there was like a competitive side to it. And I was like, oh, this is so like intriguing so I would watch my brother play a lot and eventually got to a point where like I want to be better than my brother mm. and I want to be better than my brother and his friends and then we'd go to like these local tournaments I'm like I want to be better than everybody here yeah and then I'm like oh my god there's even like regional tournaments and then there's like tournaments where you can play internationally and so it kind of just grew from like me wanting to be better than my brother and now <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> then it just kind of went from there I just wanted to be like the best in the room no matter what room I was in so um, that's kind of how my passion for like competitive gaming came from but just gaming in general was always something that my family kind of like it brought us together so you had the dream like set up for that I mean my parents I, I think we had to explain to them what a PlayStation was one yeah. was and all that uh, how old were you would you say when you really got into gaming or what I would you say that you started out like at a certain age or was it kind of a a mixed bag I think it was kind of mixed like you know when I was like really really small I I had no idea what I was doing when I was like yeah. seven years old with a yeah Game Boy in my hand I don't know what I was doing but <laughs> around like uh 13 or 14 years old is kind of when I started to go to like local tournaments with my brother I could never yeah. play in them myself um but I'd go and I'd watch him play and then you know he got busy with school and so when I got old enough to drive myself I would go um by myself to these tournaments and I made friends with people there and we'd make teams together and just kind of like go and play for fun so it it's definitely started when I was really young but when I was about 13 or 14 years old it's kind of when I started understanding that like this is there's a, a competitive serious. side yeah, yeah this is serious for me this is something that I'm really interested in yeah would you say what what was the moment that you're like I'm gonna I'm gonna push for actually going pro like when was your what was the kicker for that I think it was when I went to, um, there was a local tournament here in Southern California called SoCal Revival. And my teammate, Emily, she's actually the one that was hosting the event. Oh, nice. Um, she was trying to bring back the competitive scene in SoCal because it kind of died a little bit. So she decided to host an event and get some sponsors involved. So we wanted to bring the community back together for the competitive scene of Counter-Strike. Yeah. And so when I went to this tournament, um, I didn't know Emily at the time. I went with some friends and I met her and I was like, oh, it's really interesting to see another girl here because you don't see girls at Counter-Strike, especially like local events. You don't see them there that often. Mm -hmm. um, now you do, but back then you didn't. So uh, when I saw her, I introduced myself, we became friends. And then um, she messaged me one day and was like, hey, there's a tournament in Paris. Oh yeah. In France. That's cool. ESWC 2014. She's like, I really want to go to this event. Um, is this something that you're interested in? Let's make an all girls team. And I was like, oh yeah, totally. Like I've always wanted to play, like, you know, like I said, I always wanted to be the best in the room in any room that I was in. And now if I can go travel the world internationally and go to Paris, France to go compete and try to be the best female team in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, of course, like I'm not going to turn <laughs> that opportunity down. So I was like, let's make a team. So we did. And when we got second place at that tournament, I think everyone was expecting us to get like dead last because we were all new. We had like, this was our first experience playing at an international event and mm -hmm. we, none of us had any like background experience playing like at a huge tournament. So people definitely looked at us as the underdogs. And when we got second, I think that's kind of when it clicked and we're like, Hey, we could do this like we could yeah. get first easily at the next tournament now that we know what we're capable of doing 
Um, and sure enough, the next event that we went to was Copenhagen Games, and we got first place there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, that's a, such an interesting, like, route that you took. And, and also the fact that you just, like, stumbled upon these. You kept discovering, like, a next level to go to. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, do you have, did you follow, did you start entering the scene and, like, developing any idols like was there anybody that you were kind of like I want to you know I want to achieve what that person's done I want to do this Mm -hmm. sort of thing yeah so when I first started um like looking into the competitive scene because there weren't a lot of like women in gaming there weren't a lot of Mm -hmm. like professional female players I never had a girl to look up to it was always a male professional player so some of the players were like get right which is awesome to say now because he's also a part of Dignitas's men's team now so um, we picked up (laughs) their whole squad which is cool because those are all like players that I looked up to and now like we're part of the same organization and we're working side by side like I never in my life would have ever thought that I'd get to like be part of Dignitas and be part of like an organization where um, Get Right is a player and Forrest and Freiburg and Exist like those are all like old school players that like when I first started playing they were always the type of people that I'd look up to so it's really awesome that I get to like work with them now but yeah, that is now you're literally alongside your, yeah, your idols. Exactly. Does that all, still like get to you sometimes? Are you like, Oh my God, like, I can't believe I'm actually doing this for a living. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, the good thing is like, they're really, they're really nice people. So like I, <laughs> yeah. I'm starstruck at first, but they're so welcoming. And so like, whenever we're doing any type of uh, content videos where we have to do like little mini games with each other, like they're always so nice. So it makes you feel like, you know, I don't know. I look at them like celebrities, but I don't think they see that. Right. (laughs) Yeah. You're just trying to play cool the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And same for me too. Like whenever I go to events and people are asking me to like sign their mouse pad or sign their keyboards, I'm just like me, like you want me to sign it? Are you sure? I'm like looking around like. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. Yeah. There's a a level of fandom, I guess, that you've gotten at this point and that, you know, is huge in the esports space. Uh, what's your experience been like with that? Have the, there been any challenges, you know, just entering that space, first of all, as a woman, but also, you know, as somebody who's um, out there trying to, you know, keep leveling up and keep be- becoming the best? I think, well, as far as challenges, I think one of the biggest challenges is, um, like, outside of gaming, you have to sacrifice a lot of time into practice, into going to these tournaments and boot camps and stuff like that. So we, we miss out on a lot of holidays with our families, a lot of like personal time birthdays and stuff like that, which is like something that like at first, it's kind of hard to, to work around it. And then there's sometimes where, you know, like I'd be missing out on my niece's birthday, and I'd feel so bad about it. Um, But then I, i I try to make up for it by like, you know, doing really good at these events and coming home. And like, the cool thing is my family is like really supportive of what I do. Um, So whenever I come home from events, everyone's really happy for me. And so it's kind of like a big celebration. It's not just like, I missed out on someone's birthday. It's like, hey, I'm here. Let's celebrate your birthday now. And we can celebrate like my team did really well. So usually they're supportive of it but that's like one of the sacrifices that like it can kind of get under your skin sometimes I feel really bad about it when I'm you know out I'm supposed to be like enjoying another city but I'm over there like man I'm missing out on like uh, I missed out on Christmas or something so yeah that's like one of the biggest sacrifices but other than that like another challenge is you know obviously being a woman in 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 the esports world is is kind of hard but at the same time I like to look at it as um I just think anybody, anybody that's under the spotlight, no matter what it is that you do, no matter what your gender is, no matter what you identify as, you're always going to be uh, criticized. 100%. So yeah, that's like one of the things that my team, like we like to focus on is like, you know, we don't look at our opponents or people who are, are giving us criticism. We don't try to like pay attention to what their genders are like whenever Mm -hmm. we're in a server and we're playing against a team like we don't care if it's an all guys team an all girls team or a mixed team like we just want to beat them yeah so that's like one of the things that it's like it might be a challenge for us like being a girl playing a video game like in a male dominated world but we don't look at it that way we look at it as just like everyone's just an obstacle in the way of our goal 
Right. And it's about focusing on the game and your, yeah. like what you're trying to actually achieve as opposed mm-hmm. to listening to all the, the noise that can sometimes, you know, seep in. Yeah. Um, is there, okay. Well, in, in that case, in that kind of vein of questioning, was there, was there ever, um, a moment where, you know, it did hit home or actually I want to change my question. I've decided <laughs> I'm going to ask you something completely different. Okay. Um, because you say you have to practice a lot, have you ever tallied up or like looked at how often and, and kind of what's your approach at like scheduling out, making sure you're getting practice time in and what does that look like for you? Like in a week or, you know, overall, mm-hmm. what's been your, your kind of uh, way to make sure you're, you're on top of your game? Yeah. So our, our practice schedule would usually be like, we'd start off around like three or four o'clock in the afternoon and we'd end around 10 or 11 o'clock. Um, and and that's team practice. So that's basically like us playing together. That doesn't include time that you should be putting in as an individual. Mm -hmm. Um, so we usually start off pretty early. We do dry runs. We'll watch a demo. We'll kind of discuss things before actually going into a server and playing against another team. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll discuss things on specific maps that we want to focus on or things that we saw that like, Oh, yesterday, this is something that we were like our weakness that we had that we could work on, like things to make better. Um, and then we would go and practice, um, in a server against another team, um, either of our caliber or higher um, because you know obviously if you're winning every practice you're not going to learn anything so we try to play against teams that are better than us like I like to think of it as like every time we're losing we're learning more so like I hope we play against a team that's going to beat us (laughs) oh yeah you want the challenge exactly yeah so that's usually what our practice consists of Um, we do like maybe three or four um, practice scrimmages against another team a day Mm -hmm. Um, and that's like five days a week we take two days off yeah Mm -hmm. Is there anything, uh, any other game you'd let you'd love to try your hand? Maybe not going pro, but like would love to get really good at Valorant. Definitely. Valorant, I, I've, yeah. I've been, have putting, you been playing a ton. I have been playing a ton. I feel like my whole sleeping schedule, like I'm a complete degenerate right now because of my <laughs> <laughs> because of this game. Like I stay up to like eight o'clock in the morning, and I miss that feeling of having a game that's just like you you just lose track of time. You know? Oh yeah. I yeah. miss that feeling. And I, I'm getting that again with like, I only had that ever with Counter-Strike where I would ever stay up super late right. um, playing a game and like losing track of time and like, oh my gosh, I'm going to miss my class because of this game. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm having that with Valorant. So it, it feels nostalgic almost, almost because it's reminding me of when I first started playing Counter-Strike. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a completely new game. So it feels very fresh. It feels... You're learning. You know, yeah, exactly. So I'm on addicted <laughs> uh what are some things you like about it have, and have you found it particularly difficult or a bit more you know like this shoe fits it's super easy for me to get accustomed to this it's it's I think for me and I don't mean to like have like a big head about it but yeah, it's yeah. definitely no, easy for me <laughs> to get accustomed to it um I think a lot of it is very similar to Counter-Strike I know some of the developers were uh, Counter-Strike fans or right. Counter-Strike professionals. So um, I, it's very related to CS in the sense of like the aim and like the movement and everything. It feels mm-hmm. really similar. Yeah. Um, the only thing that definitely throws people off is using abilities but luckily Mm. I play like all types of FPS games so I did play Overwatch and you have characters with certain abilities so you kind of learn how to use them together as a team so I feel like I kind of have I don't know you know some players might have an upper hand as far as aim but I feel like I I know how to use my abilities correctly and plus I know how to aim and I know like the movement and everything and all the the mechanics of the game and everything so I definitely feel like whenever I'm in a server playing um I definitely feel really confident against other people (laughs) good I mean I haven't played much of uh, Valorant um is there uh, a team element to it I'm guessing yes. oh yeah oh yeah definitely yeah so it is Sorry, I haven't played it, so I'm trying to get some inside info. (laughs) Yeah, so it it is like Counter-Strike in the sense that it's 5v5. Um, You have two different sites. Actually, there's one map that has three different sites, and then you have um, the spike, which you need to you plant the spike. And then one team has to attack, one team defends. Um, But I think like team team play-wise, one of the things that is different than any other game out there right now is the fact that you have 
uh, characters with abilities. So I think it's really important to like know what each person's ability does. You have characters that are definitely more aggressive, characters right. that are more passive, yeah. and you have characters that can team up really well together. Um, like one thing I've been seeing a lot is there's a, a um, a character named Sage and what she does is she has like an ice orb and when she throws it on the floor it covers a large amount of ground and you're slowed oh, so yeah. you're slowed down in this ice orb and then you have a character who's really overpowered right now she throws a grenade that like ex- uh, it explodes into uh, clusters of grenades oh my so god it's a big Very grenade awful. that yeah that rains smaller grenades yeah so one thing that you've been seeing a lot is people will throw a slow orb and then they'll throw, the, another person will throw their grenade in that slow orb. So if you have a team stuck in that slow orb, there's nowhere for them to run. Yeah, it's just you're stuck. Exactly. Uh, have you been playing with some of your, what, who have you been playing with? Just like your go-to group of people or do you have Yeah. Any, okay. So my go-to group of people are, are other Counter-Strike players. So I've yeah. been playing, um, there's actually a Discord that we're all in. Um, a lot of the CS pros are in it and they do nice. 10 bands. So what it is is you have two captains and then everybody like you pick players and we just awesome. play with random teams. So, and it's, it's interesting to see um, all the like different ideas that people are having and like, cause it's a new game. So there's no, there's no strategy yet. There's no like. It's developing its, uh, its whole um, meta. Yeah, exactly. So it's really, it's really interesting to see. And that's something that I've always like loved about Counter-Strike was like um, the grenades in Counter-Strike. Mm -hmm. Um, I could spend hours in my own server by myself, just running around a map, practicing different things that people have never seen, certain flashes or Molotovs to throw from like really cool spots that cover like areas that we can attack. So that's something that I enjoy a lot in Counter-Strike is like the coming up with a strategy. Yeah. Um, So now that there's a game that's similar to that and it's fresh and it's new like I can be one of the first people to come up with something that people have never seen before good good on you to, to be doing that yeah. like that's and not everyone enjoys having to do that too like yeah a lot of people and, look at it as like homework you know yeah I'm like I don't want to do it unless it's a real <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask the audience, you guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, you know, we're going to be trying to get as much time in with uh, Lenny. Thank you again, by the way, for being on the show, by the oh, way. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're, you're so awesome. You must have had some really, like, cool experiences just winning. I, I remember seeing, like, one of your main posts on your Twitter profile where you guys won uh, twice in a row, like, back to back. Yeah. What, what was that experience like? Like, was that a, a pie in the sky moment for you? Yeah, it was just, uh, I can't explain the feelings that we had on stage. I just yeah, it must felt, been cool. Yeah, like the whole, the, for the whole tournament from the day that we got there, I, I'm just like, I'm definitely a different person when I'm at a tournament. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't Confident. mean to say that. <laughs> or like, yeah. Or I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm the, just the in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm definitely just in the zone. Like, I, I try to do the things that like, you know, we're, you know, like, we're, um, sorry. Uh, interacting with our fans like I try to do those type of things but at the same time I'm just so in the zone that like like let me get this out of the way first and then like I'll come take pictures with you (laughs) yeah (laughs) because this is like my main goal right here so I'm definitely a different person when I'm at tournaments I'm just my head is only Counter-Strike that's like when I go back to the hotel I'm only thinking about CS when I go to sleep I feel like I might be dreaming about CS like when I wake (laughs) up that's like the first thing I'm thinking about so yeah it's definitely like a really cool experience, especially when you have um, teammates where like you wake up, you have breakfast together. There's like this routine that we have, you know, and it's mm-hmm. like ev- you could tell that everybody is just ready. We're just ready to go and play on stage. We're ready to play. And I don't know. I felt like throughout that whole tournament, there was just not a moment where we did not have like confidence in ourselves. Like we yeah. were just full on like we're here and we're ready to win. Like, you know. Game just face get on. out of our way yeah exactly <laughs> so when we won it was like it was really satisfying but it was also almost like like I, of course we won <laughs> yeah you're like duh yeah this is totally normal yeah um there is a good question here from uh mastermind he asked do you see yourself switching to valorant completely in a pro scene i don't know is it too early to tell I think it's too early to tell. There's definitely some changes I'd like to see in Valorant before they decide to like have a ranking system or or a league or anything like that. Um, But, you know, I'm sure the game will change even when it gets released officially. I'm sure it'll change as it goes, like just like Counter-Strike. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm interested to see what they do with all the characters that people are saying are really overpowered or like some of the things that people have been like constantly complaining about. Um, yeah. Who's your favorite character? I didn't ask. I like to play Sage. I think Sage, uh, yeah. especially when I'm like solo queuing by myself, I think yeah. she's a really good character to play because she's a support character so I can help my team. But at the same time, if my team's not really good, <laughs> I can use her to be selfish and heal mm-hmm. myself and like use her abilities for myself if I need to, if I'm in a situation where I have to carry my team. Yeah. Um, so I like using her a lot uh, or Phoenix it's the same way. You can be selfish with his abilities, but you can also be a team player. Very cool. Yeah. I'm so glad I got some Valorant uh, chat with you because uh, it's, you know, it's a big game right now. People oh, are yeah. really into it and playing it a lot. Um, I guess the next question we have is from an audience member here, Chrissy Poo. Uh, what advice would you give a parent um, who ultimately wants to pursue a pro career? Yeah, I guess just overall, what, what would your advice be to, you know, anybody trying to go pro? What was something that you felt maybe really helped you? Um, well, so for me, definitely having support from your family for that yeah. type of decision. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was it was hard for me at first because I I didn't always have my parents' approval for doing what I you know what I wanted yeah. to do. Um, yeah. In fact, I was living on my own and I was going to college when Emily asked me to join the team. Um, and when I told my mom that I well, I asked my professors, I was like, can I go to this tournament and still right. like have time to do like, am I going to miss anything? <laughs> and I had professors that were telling me like, no, like you, there's no way you can take like a week and a half off or two weeks off. Like uh, you'll fail the class. I'm just like, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, well then bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I decided to drop out. I never finished college. I dropped out and my mom was so mad. Oh no. <laughs> she was very unsupportive um, of the decision at first. My dad was very skeptical. Um, he was like, I'm not so sure. What were you studying actually out of curiosity? Uh, so I was going to transfer uh, and I was, well, one of the things I was really interested in at first was um, biochemical engineering. So oh, I yeah. really wanted yeah, I was, uh, my, my mom cool. always, told, my mom and my dad always told me, like, <laughs> you're the smartest, like, child out of everybody, like, you cannot mess this up, and I'm like, all right, Aww. like, my dad wanted me to be, like, a, a doctor, a registered nurse, and kind of follow in his footsteps, and Aww. I was like, okay, so biochem was kind of something that always intrigued me, mm-hmm. um, but I decided to drop out for Counter-Strike, <laughs> which is really weird to say. <laughs> no, I mean, you've had so much success in it, it it's, it's your path, like, it's definitely, yeah. you know, if you were not doing good and you were yeah. like always the bottom team, then I, yeah. Yeah. And I, I would feel bad if I was even remotely close to even getting a degree, but I was, I was just starting. So I wasn't like too, too True. like bummed out about it. So you didn't lose that much time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So would you my, ever go back? Actually? Yeah. I've been thinking about going back, but, um, now that I've been so involved in esports, uh, it's, I, it's definitely something I want to do for the rest of my life. Nice. Um, so I think if I do go back, which I do plan on going back to school, I think it's really important to definitely to have that type of education. So yeah. um, I definitely plan on taking some type of online classes for marketing or business. Oh, cool. so, so that way I can do something within esports. Uh, who knows? Maybe end up being some type of role where I'm playing management for new players and stuff like that. So um, I definitely think I have that experience and I definitely. have such a huge passion for everything esports related. There's no way that I don't do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, you, even if you like don't end up playing or you could always go another route, like way yeah. later down the road, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, so here's something, I guess for the, you know, just to wrap everything up. So the advice is, you know, go ahead, make sure you're, you get a good support system, whether that's a family yeah. or a group of friends or something. Um, and then I guess just to end it, I wanted to let people in on kind of where they can expect, uh, to see you more of in 2020. What's kind of your, uh, thing that you're working on for this year? Um, so this year, my main goal is definitely to just come out with more content. I think as a professional player, people see me play video games all the time. Really good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I definitely want to do, you know, I love all sorts of games, not just, FPS games so a lot of times like when I'm streaming lately um what I've been streaming is Animal Crossing or you know just different games where people you know there's like people want to watch this gameplay but there's not like anyone's no one's really streaming it or no one's really like Mm -hmm. involved with it everyone's Mm -hmm. playing Valorant right now yeah yeah other there's other games out there too that 
need some spotlight. And so like, I want to be that person to kind of give them that spotlight, but definitely like, I want to come out with more content. I want to upload more vlogs and more social channels. Yeah. And people find you just so they know. (laughs) Yes. So my, I mostly post on Twitter. Um, but you can find me all my social media is at Lenny no quiz. Um, my, my Twitter, my Instagram, if you search up Lenny no quiz on YouTube everywhere. Um, my Twitch is art star. Love it. Yeah. Art star. I love that. Where'd you get the inspiration for the name? Uh, so art star came from, well, first it was, I didn't even know this, but it was a song and it's, oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's a song. It's a really weird song though. Don't, I don't <laughs> right. want to listen to it. It's very odd, but um, <laughs> I came up with it because uh, when I was growing up, I was definitely always the creative one. Um, so I loved all types of forms of art, whether it was oh, like cool. music or painting or writing or reading uh, literature, everything. Like I was really into art. So yeah. I was like, oh, I'm a star of the arts. arts. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on our show. I mean, we've been talking back and forth about having you on and I'm glad we finally were able to do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, me too. Hope to see you, uh, you know, around some events someday and uh, good luck with everything. You've been obviously crushing it. And I know everyone's going to be looking forward to the content you create this year. Um, cool. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks guys for watching the show. Thank you so much again to, uh, our guest art star. What an awesome name. It it totally fits (laughs) in my vein of things that I like because, uh, honestly, I'm pretty good at art myself. I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. Uh, (laughs) I've been doing a baby Yoda. (laughs) Um, All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. We have another awesome guest scheduled for next week, of course. We hope you'll tune in. We hope you enjoyed today's show. We talked about, you know, Animal Crossing, a bunch of Final Fantasy uh, VII remake, of course, and uh, Valorant, which was also great. Guys, uh, I hope you guys tune in for next week's episode. Uh, Kyle will be here. We always try to make this as smooth as possible of a production because we're doing it from home these days. Um, But yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Play lots of Animal Crossing. Keep you posted on my Baby Yoda painting and all that good stuff. (laughs) All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, everybody. Say bye to Lenny.